everyone and their mother are farming mobs in the open world because it makes for huge fame and silver. And why shouldn't they when a single mob literally gives more rewards than an entire solo dungeon? If you didn't know yet, mobs in Albion Online can now evolve and as they become stronger, they provide better rewards. So it's no surprise that the activity of hunting mobs in the open world has become one of the primary activities for many players. I spent two days in the black zone to figure out what build works best for me in this particular activity and today I'm going to share the build with you along with a few tips on how to go about using it. This build has a lot of single target damage, sustainability and survivability, so basically everything you need for this content. With this build, none of the evolved mobs in the open world should be a problem to kill and you also have a fair chance of escaping in case you need to do so. The build I'm using is as follows. I use the one-handed dagger, which has the bloodthirsty blade as the special ability. Um, this is great for single target damage and sustain. Once you activate this ability, your auto attacks have additional damage to them and you steal 100% of the bonus damage back as health. So this is simply perfect for this content. I'm using Thunder Armor as it decreases the mob's resistances, allowing me to do even more damage with my E. And I'm using Throwing Blades for the damage buff. As for my passive, I'm using Deep Cuts. And I did try out like different variations of abilities, you know, aside from trying out different variations of this build. And this setup just works best for me. Since this is um, the one-handed dagger, you also want to take the Hunter Jacket as the haste ability increases your attack speed by 60%, which is just massive when your E is all about auto attacks. And on top of that, you also get an increase to your damage. So this buff is just really great together with Blood Thirsty Blade. You want to take Swiftness as the passive on this armor for an additional 12% attack speed, which makes this, um, which makes the total 72% increase to attack speed. So the Hunter Jacket is just really great with the one-handed dagger. I do need to be a bit careful right now because I am in the black zone. Um, I went out again and as you can see, this is about half hour, yeah, half hour worth of loot. We just had a medium chest here as well, um, which some random people uh, invited me to the group of. So uh, yeah, some extra rewards there. Now this dagger is the one-handed dagger, right? So, um, or one of the one-handed daggers. So you can use an offhand with it. And I keep saying you can use an offhand with it, but you should use an offhand with it, right? Um, otherwise, you just uh, debuff yourself. Um, I decided to go for the Musak, and the reason I decided to do that over any other offhand with this specific build, for this specific activity, is because you want to you want to kill the mobs as quick as possible and get mounted again, right? So let me show you, yeah? Like, my goal here is to kill this monster as quick as possible. He did use an ability, though. Just get him as quick as possible, loot his silver, and just mount up, right? So, I just want like extra damage through my offhand, and the Musak provides physical attack bonus and physical ability bonus, which is just great. I also took the beef stew for the same reason, um, even more damage through the beef stew. But I do want to say that if you want to go with a different offhand, if you want to go with a different food, that's completely viable as well. So that's up to you, but this is how I go about playing this build, and so far I had a lot of success with it. I didn't die once yet, and I managed to kill everything I wanted to. But so far, it's been doing great. Um, the helmet, honestly, I have I went through a lot of different helmets, like, um, like five different helmets, I think. You know, um, one of the options was the mage cow for even more damage, but I don't know. I, I feel like you already have plenty of damage, and the mage cow doesn't really contribute that much to this build. And honestly, I don't know what helmet contributes the most, but I figured, you know, because some of these mobs, they can become real tough. You know, they have like, especially the high evolved ones, um, they spam like a lot of abilities. They do a lot of damage. So I figured, you know what, the Guardian helmet, um, it's a nice defense. Whether you are below or above 40%, it, you know, the shield is welcome. And it also is like a countermeasure against gankers, right? It adds a bit of extra survivability to the build. So basically, we have one, two, three, four items that are centered around damage with this build, and we have one, two, 
two, three, four items that are centered around survivability. I'm taking the undead cape with this build because, um, yeah, I don't need I don't need any other ability of any other faction cape. You know, I don't need the Tetford cape for more damage, uh, nor the demon cape. Um, I don't need the Morgana cape either because I already get like a huge attack speed buff from my armor. So I went with the undead cape for extra open world survivability. I do think the condition for this cape is like harsh, right? But otherwise it would be like OP. So I think it's it's fair. It's fair. But do keep in mind that often people tend to burst you down the last 20-30%. So this may not activate. May not always activate. But if it does activate, it can save your life. You know, you are in the open world after all. Um, if you go to the black zone like me, um, you do have a risk of dying, right? Anytime. A chest here just spawned, so I will go to that in just a couple minutes. Um, other than that, yeah, the invisibility potion. Um, as I said before, plenty of damage already. Um, my goal is not to PvP, you know, and I just want more open world survivability. So the invisibility potion contributes to that once again. Um, just great to escape if you are like in trouble, you know. Just pop the invisibility potion and um, make your way somewhere safe. Together with the invisibility potion, what um, what works is when the lust from the soldier boots. Um, once you pop this, um, it builds up. Like you get stacks of movement speed up to eight times, and once you reach the max stacks, you also have like a huge movement speed buff for another seven seconds. So what you can do is um, pop one the lust, pop invisibility potion right after you know, and just disappear like real far real fast i think i just activated a mob or there's someone here it's a gather i think it looks like a gather i'll slowly make my way to the uh what's it called to the chest see if uh, anyone else is there or not um but whilst i go there i do want to show a couple important things about this build uh first of all if you are like mounted up yeah and gankers surround you yeah what you can do is change your Dagger to deadly swipe and dash, right? This will add some extra mobility to this build, which is very welcome in case your sole purpose is to escape, right? If you feel like extra safe having these two abilities on permanently, that's fine as well. But I, I really like Thunder Armor and Throwing Blades more because it really, you know, boosts the DPS you do on the mobs. So you have to spend less time on the ground. Um, let me see. Everything else is fine right now. Yeah, if you need extra weight, like I do in this case, um, swap to Curia. Otherwise, have it on toughness, of course. Have your boots on toughness. Let's see, how long for the chest? Two minutes for the chest. So, since I am going for the chest, you know what? I have two minutes. I will quickly demonstrate a couple important things, um, which has helped me out a lot, you know, and uh, helps others out a lot as well. So let's quickly um, find the mob here, an evolved mob. Oh, you know what? It doesn't even have to be evolved. Let's just find the mob, like this one, yeah? So one thing you want to do is always keep your mount up in the black zone, yeah? So what I do is I just dismount on the mob. And because of the changes, my Q, W, and E are up already. And I can just, you know, um, stay next to my mount and kill the mob. Yeah, that's like very, very important. Let's quickly go for the chest. How long? I don't want to miss it. But after that, I got some more important things to tell you. If I don't die. <laughs> oh, wait. There's a mob here. Okay, so this mob is like 2.2k HP, right? So it's like a mid-tier mob, yeah? Um, with some mobs, like this one here, you want to dismount. You want to use your E right away. Just spam everything. Kill it as quick as possible and get up, yeah? But with some of the mobs, like this one, a mid-tier mob or the higher tier mobs, what you want to do is use your fill combo, and I am going to show you the fill combo in just a second. Um, but I first want to contest this chest, so if you guys allow me, you know. Seems to be someone here. Let me swap to uh, escape things here. It's a bow. Oh, it's a dire group, man. Yeah, I'm not going to... I think these guys are together, yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure these guys are together. Okay, I'm not going to contest it. Never mind. Yeah. Let's, see, let's see what they do. Let's see what they do. What do they have? They have a healer. 
Yeah, curse. Yeah, never mind, man. I'm not gonna. I might. I might. I might try. I might be crazy. Yeah. Let's 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 see what the rarity is. If the rarity is something great, I might. If it's like uh, legendary, yeah. Oh, it's green. Okay, I will let them have it. Yeah, I'm not gonna contest for a green. Yeah, because uh, I did some. Uh, Contesting in very stupid ways earlier, and it was like deadly close to lying, so uh, I'm not gonna do that again. I will actually show that clip at the end of this video, maybe. Like, I played it so bad, I don't really want to show that clip, you know, but uh, yeah, I did get like quite some loot. Okay, here we have some mobs that are higher tier, right? Okay, so once again, let's quickly swap everything back to the original state. Alright, so mob like this, yeah, low HP. You dismount, you use everything, and you kill it, right? You don't care about your armor whatsoever. Um, these are in a group, though. This is a bit tough. Okay, so how would I go about killing this group, yeah? I would just tar target, like, the weakest one among them, yeah? Use my W. I would hold on to my uh, R and E to use them together. Make sure to dodge all the abilities, because um, they stun you, you know, you don't want to get CC'd in the open world, basically. So make sure not to get stunned whatsoever. But, you know, just use your armor and your E ability together when you have, like, multiple targets, yeah? And make sure to hit your W on as many targets as possible, because that way you get a 45% buff to your damage as well for 5 seconds. Let's find a single evolved mob so I can show the full combo, yeah? And I will kill it a bit slower than normal, because I want to explain how the combo works. But I'll I'll do like two evolved mobs. One where I explain the combo, and then I will do another where I um do the combo fully without explaining whatsoever. So here we have one, yeah? It's like a mid-tier mob, 1.7k HP. Although it, it is kind of like on the low side of HP, but anyway, I dismount on it. I use my Q. I use my Q three times, basically, yeah? And once I have used it three times, I use my W, my armor, and my E. So it did die quite quick this time. So let's, let's find another one. Ah, oh, there's a note here. Yeah, so one thing I haven't said yet. Um, I, like, I've been doing this for two days now, and... Um, the first run, I didn't bring any gathering tools with me, and I saw, like, a lot of these enchanted notes, right? And I was like, damn, I need to bring gathering tools with me, yeah? Um, like, this pickaxe, it's 63k. And this all I just gathered, yeah, I got eight of them. It's 117k already. You see, it's... Like, it's insane, guys, honestly. Um, don't don't just do... Oh, it's another, another tick. There we go. Two more, that's another 30k, so... Um, like, when you are hunting for evolved mobs, you know, you are going to be walking around a lot. So... Look, you see how this guy, you see how this guy has his mount up next to him? You know, if he senses danger, he just mounts up. And that's how you should be doing. Like, what he is doing is great, and that's what you should be doing as well. Um, but yeah, about the gathering... Um, like... Low investment, I feel like 63k um, is pretty low investment. Even lower if you have like lower tier um, gathering tools, right? Make sure to bring some journals as well. Like these four journals are worth 53k, you know. It's all extra silver. I bring tier 5 journals and tier 8 journals. Because um, the T5s are being filled by tier 5, 6 and 7 resources. And tier 8 fills up the tier 8 journal. I feel like I wanted to say something, but I forgot. I'm not sure. Um, but make sure to bring gathering tools, yeah? Okay, let me show you the combo once more on a target with a bit more HP, basically. So this one has 2.2, but what you want to do is dismount on it. Use your Q three times, yeah? Use your Q three times. Once that's max stacks, use your R, W, E, and just auto-attack, yeah? So once again, Q three times. And then you use your R for the haste buff. Then you use your throwing blades for the damage buff. And then you use your E and you auto attack like a madman. 
that's that's like the combo on um, the bosses with uh, like the evolve mobs with higher health. I'll be looking around a bit more. By the way, I don't have my food active right now. Um, I should probably activate that, but I think I'm uh, going to head to town soon. I went like pretty deep this for like I went all the way to Bridgewatch. I came from Portal West, so yeah, I I, I do want to go back to uh. I do want to go back to Limhurst, so I'll slowly go back to Limhurst. Um, but yeah, I think the most important things are bring your gathering tools with you, because you are going to be walking around a lot looking for mobs, and you will run into a lot of resources. So you know, it's 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 a waste if you don't um, if you can't gather them basically just because you don't have resources with you. Here we have another higher evolved one. This one has 4.2k. HP, so I'll just use my um, food here for the field demonstration. Yeah, so this is how I would go about killing this guy here. Yeah, dismount, use three times Q, armor, W, E, and just auto attack like crazy. Okay, nice, and that's 103k fame. That's that's really insane fame for like a couple seconds of work. It's it's insane. I do have a satchel though. Keep that in mind. Um, if you want to go with the regular bag, that's fine as well. It's completely up to you. I just want more fame right now than I want silver. So um, the satchel is doing me great. I use my final food, so I need to make my way back to town slowly. Let's see if there's anything interesting in the tier seven and tier eight area. You know. Um, Let's see if we find any evolved mobs there. If we don't, I'm going to end the video slowly. Um, if we do, who knows? I don't feel good on the uh, stag though, it's so slow. I came here with the Grey Wolf, but I think, um, I'm not even sure what happened. I think I killed someone. I'm pretty sure I killed someone. Yeah, I killed someone. And then um, I took the stag because I was overweight otherwise. But it's 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 really slow. I don't like it. I'm cutting the video off here, guys, because there was nothing else in the upcoming zones. So that's basically it for today's video. If you have any questions about the build whatsoever, ask it in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.